Hey guys, very quick one from me before you jump into this interview. This interview is part of a larger Wrestle Kingdom 18 preview as part of Wrestle In, uh, which combines multiple interviews. It combines insight from myself and Trent ahead of the big show. So if you enjoy this interview, please check out the other interviews or check out the entire Wrestle Kingdom 18 preview, whatever works best for you. I wanted to make this as easily accessible for you so you can cherry pick what you want. Enjoy this interview and enjoy Wrestle Kingdom. And thank you for checking out Wrestle In. And joining me now for as part of the Wrestle Kingdom 18 preview is the Gorillas of Destiny, El Fantasmo and Hikileo, the strong openweight tag team champions, ready and primed for Wrestle Kingdom 18, where they will be challenging for the IWGP Tag Team Championships, going up head to head against Bishamon, title versus title. I need to kick this off with the big question, guys. Where the hell did Hikileo get an elf costume that would fit him for that World Tag League press conference? <laughs> I was yeah, I was just done, as bro. surprised as you, man. I was just as surprised as you when I walked in the room. EOP had his elf hat on, and I was like, I wonder if you found one for me. And then, boom, pulls it out. Size XL too. I'm I'm a two X to a three X. Uh, where'd you, you got, get that you from? Was that from, uh, was that from um, Amazon? Yeah, I just ordered it off Amazon. Got it shipped to the uh, hotel in Kumamoto. I was about to say, there's no way you got that in Japan, because surely they would have no, been no, big yeah. enough to hit Kalera in Japan. Uh -oh. Absolutely no way, but it was kind of one of those things where I was like, well, it was the same with the Bird and Ernie costume. I didn't know if it was going to fit, but it would also been funnier if it didn't fit. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that, that either, either way, I'm forcing them to wear it, but yeah, I was surprised that uh, the XL fit them so good and it looked good. And, you know, Jado son <laughs> actually went and bought his own Santa hat and beard. I, I, like. That got me when he done the ho ho ho, and then he asked for the translation as well. <laughs> yeah, he's he's low key funny man. He's got some uh, he's got some good English. One of the uh, one of the better guys that speaks English, so he I, he understands humor. I I do love Jardo, and you you mentioned about an Ernie costume as well. Have you had any other ideas that you've like not been able to plan out, or that you know maybe if you've got ones for the future and you don't want to save any that you wanted to do for previous press conferences? I mean the. The the first press conference was just was at Halloween, so I was like, oh, it would be funny just to come in like a costume. I remember like I sent a tweet out to Alex Zane. I was like, yo, you guys better fucking wear something nice and drippy because we're gonna out drip you guys. <laughs> and then he like he didn't know how to take that. And then we got to a Vegas, and I we came in like jeans and a t shirt. And he like he was like, oh, I thought you guys were like wearing some like fancy outfits or something. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I just wanted to like talk shit. And then uh, as they were like doing their entrance and they went out i like went into my backpack and pulled out the bird and ernie costumes and then we put them on and didn't tell them and then we came out dressed up as bird and ernie and you know popped them pretty good and everyone backstage was laughing but the original plan i wanted to do was uh, have leo as big bird and then i would be oscar the grouch because that's basically who we are in sesame street versions but they had a big bird costume for his size but they didn't have an oscar the grouch in my size so then I was like, ah, this is not going to work. And then I was like, oh, what if we be like a blue and pink Powerpuff girl? And then, <laughs> uh, yeah, then I saw the bird and Ernie. And I was like, oh, well, Bert's tall and Ernie's like dumb. I was like, oh, it'll, it'll work. We'll see what happens. And then it got such a good reaction that, you know, we were like, we got to do something for the Christmas and, you know, be a little like Santa elves giving out presents to the fans and stuff. So. Yeah, no, no sure what your vibe is. EOP can find an elf costume in Japan that can fit me. But New Japan can't give me track suits for the last two years. I don't fit. <laughs> like the last two years, I got track suits that come up to my forearm and down to my shins. And I'm like, come on, bro, just make one three X for me. If you can make one for Fale, why can't you make one for me, please? Yeah, no. If you don't this year, man, let's fucking cause some hell, bro. <laughs> uh, so the real reason we're of course Rust Kingdom 18 is around the corner you head into Tokyo Dome to face Fishermon winners will be crowned dual IWGP and strong Omite tag team champions how are you feeling heading into the Tokyo Dome ELP it's not your first rodeo but Hikileo your first time on the main card yeah I'm excited I'm stoked like you said it's my first time on the main card I've only been on the Rumble the right Rambo whatever it's called uh, but yeah, super stoked for that. Um, the nerves are starting to kick in a little bit now that I'm getting a lot, a lot more questions. It's starting to settle in a little bit more. I'm sure by the time we see the stage and we go backstage getting ready for the show itself and the crowd starts coming in, that's usually when the butterflies start kicking in. But 
luckily I got someone who's been on that big stage a couple times and uh, someone who's got plenty of experience with that. I got your back, baby girl. Don't you Wait. worry. One serious question, though, as well, is like fans are speculating, myself included, with because Strong isn't so much strong as it once was anymore. It's not its own weekly TV show. You know, it's just kind of kind of pay-per-views, for lack of a better word. Um, uh, if if you win the titles, if Bishman wins the titles, is the, will the titles be unified? Are they going to be defended separately? Would you want to unify them if you win the match and it's your decision? Um, yeah, I don't know, to be honest, what's going to happen with that. Uh, if it was up to me, I would uh, sell the strong titles to the highest bidding fan, and then I would okay. take that money and then buy new IWGP tag team championships because they're a little faded. You know, they're not they're not shiny as they used to be, and and uh, you know we're really focused on becoming the 100th IWGP tag team champions. That I would like to see new IWGP straps, nice new shiny boys. The like the blue fucking strong titles are beat to shit. Like the war dogs threw them around the ring for the last uh, six months that like all the bolts are falling off and the little lion plates are like, we had to super glue them and the, we're the trying lion to scrub them. And almost got lost. That was at a two, two, nine show. I was like, there Gabe yeah. kid comes out, he drops the title and the, I saw the plate ping off. And uh, yeah. David, David Francisco, who you probably know, uh, like went to pick up the belt and he went to walk away without the plate. And I was like, David, like the thing's busted. And he went to grab that as well. So, I mean, maybe I should have kept my mouth shut and I'll have a bit of memorabilia there. But Well, that's, I mean, that's why the War Dogs had the stickers over the belts. I mean, yeah. they just, they look like shit. Uh, like, we like wrestling for strong, but, yeah, you know, I, I'm on the uh, opinion that there is maybe a couple too many titles in New Japan. We don't need fucking 45 titles, even though we have a roster of, like, over 100 people. But, yeah, I get why I get why we have them. I like uh, I like doing the strong shows. Uh, I have a lot of love for the strong brand, but you know I don't know how many strong shows we're going to be doing to defend them on. But at the same time, hey, we'll defend them both. We'll defend them individually. We'll defend them both on one night. I think I don't know if that's ever been done before. You know, no. defend the strong titles and the IWGP titles later on. I think that'd be. No, it. They, they had it Independence Day. It was not one night after the other with War Dogs and Bishmon, but no, not the same night. Yeah, see, like they kind of already done that whole like song and dance with the dual strong IWGP. Like, who knows what's going on with the open weight championship that Eddie has with becoming the triple crown? Like, who knows what's going on with that? So, yeah, that's a cluster fucking half. Um, but you two collectively, you're known as Grillers of Destiny. Of course, that name also includes Jado, Tamatonga, Tangalo, the whole crew. Have you two batted about any team names or just the two of you? Oh, we tried. Trust me. We tried before <laughs> we got started. We were like big, big blue balls. Of <laughs> big theory. blue sexy boys, big yeah. and small, pink and brown. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're just like, you know what? We'll just keep it simple. If something pops up, it pops up. But right now, just the G.O.D., Gorillas of Destiny, the Rillas, the Gorillas, you know, we'll, we'll run. We'll carry that torch for now. The G.O.D. fit very good in my E.L.P. song, so that was an easy fix. So, yeah, yeah, it, the the E.L.P. So you've always got great music, but you you have your own hand in doing that, don't you? You've um, no, make your own music. You're putting out playlists on Spotify and those type of things. Who in wrestling right now would you guys say has the best entrance music? Not including G.O.D. Ooh, that's hmm. a good question. Oh, you know what? Uh, Henry. Oh uh, yeah, his is like he, he's got that like what? tribal metal music or something. Yeah, I can't I, he doesn't it that doesn't doesn't play very often. I I, I want to see him rack up some more big wins so I can hear that music. But I remember I heard it backstage. I was like, whose fucking song is this? This rules, and uh, it was Henry's new new theme song. We were, that's really oh, cool. I like uh, Kaito Kiyomiya's. His is real like Japan, <laughs> like it's just so. He's got like a he's pirate boy though. Yeah, it sounds oh, like pirate pirate's. music, but then he yeah. comes looking like a peacock. I'm like, you gotta look dressed like a pirate, bro. You gotta study <laughs> those like Paul Birchall tapes, man. Come on. Oh man, uh, ELP, you've had a year of big changes. You you know left Bullet Club, become a fan favorite, ultimately joined God. Uh, the World Tag League final, you kind of end up having to go solo for the last five minutes because he has been put through a table. For five solo. minutes, bro. Come on, bro. Do your research. Longer than I was five, like, yeah. I was like 18. 
<laughs> it wasn't that long. Felt like 20. <laughs> um, but yeah, like the crowd are losing their mind, rooting for you. They're so firmly behind you when they're just stacked against you in that moment. Um, I think it's clear how much the Japanese audience have really grown to love you as both a singles wrestler and a tag wrestler now, Hikleo, like your match with Naito in the New Japan Cup um, when you challenged Tama and uh, Tama Tonga and David Finney for the never title and now the two of you collectively as well getting great reactions. Why do you think you've been able to build such a great connection with the Japanese crowd? Because not everyone can. Uh, I pay them before the show. It's a good, good, good idea. They're really like a hundred yen. It's like 70 cents Canadian. Throw out a couple of those coins. Oh, hey, don't, don't forget who, who, who gave you some free money. But uh, no, I don't know. I, I think that the, the Japanese fans are a lot smarter than the Western audience and they understand the sacrifices that i went through during covid and you know all the effort that i'm putting in for uh, diminishing returns and then you know the whole getting kicked out of bullet club getting kicked in the balls by ishimori having kenta turn his back and not having any friends you know having all these big matches and i just keep losing and i can't quite get myself to the next level and then finally the the god brothers come in and pick me up off the ground and then take me out to dinner and you know kind of invite me into their family it was like a a, a real feel-good moment for them for everyone who's been following uh what we've been doing and uh yeah you know it's it's genuine we're having a lot of fun uh giving the love back to the fans because during covid it was real hard to not cheer and not boo and you know they couldn't drink at the shows and they couldn't sit by their friends and they had to clap for like two three hours in a row like if you ever tried clapping for like 30 seconds it sucks it's annoying yeah i mean like, i've done wrestle kingdom this year 2023 and like tokyo dome i was allowed to cheer and make noise and then the next year at new year's dash i had yeah. to sit there and i had to sit there and clap and it's like oh jay yeah, white to sucks, a loser man. leaves japan match and i have to yeah. sit here on my hands and it, it's it was awful just for that one night like, being a japanese fan that's going to korokun all the time yeah like it, it sucks and it got i i got over being a dickhead to them for so long you know it, it became a lot of work to try and be a bad guy that i was like i was getting over it that i was like i'm just gonna start being nicer to them and they deserve it and like they're keeping this company afloat it's not us it's easy to wrestle for 10 minutes in front of silence but like the fans deserve all the love and appreciation for keeping new japan afloat because without them we probably wouldn't be here right now during that whole pandemic and that's not their fault it's the, you know the japanese government's fault but you know the they're also not used to like the fan service that we do like you know I don't see other guys jumping in the crowd and giving them their titles and, you know, interacting with them and taking photos with them and giving them the little hearts and stuff. Like you see a lot more of the boys doing it now that we've started doing it, but you know, it's just something that we wanted to give back to the fans and they've liked it. I think. In that same vein, he Clara, speaking about peace 2023, your 2023 has been off the charts. Like you start off defeating Jay White in that loser leaves Japan match. You win the strong openweight championship. You make the quarterfinals at a G1 climax. You win the strong openweight tag team titles with ELP. And then you top it off by making the finals of World Tag League and you're heading into Wrestle Kingdom to kick off 2024. The, in, the year started for you with the internet rumor, rumor mill running rampant about whether WWE have an interest in you, WWE have an interest in Jay White, making a lot of intrigue into this match you was going to have. Um, and now at the end of the year, where there was doubt at the beginning, if you're going to be in New Japan, now you're firmly part of this next generation of New Japan that's clearly come into the fold with Ray or Three Musketeers, Yu Yu Romero, all those guys. Um, you went into, you, I'm sure you went into 2023 with big plans, wanting big success, but did you expect to have this much success? Like, how does it feel now at the end of the year to look back at everything? Yeah, no, I, I think I just, coming into the year, it would just take one thing at a time. Uh, the whole Jay uh, situation came up surprisingly. Uh, I didn't, like you said, near as dash. I didn't see that coming. It came out from left field, and it was just taking each tour for what it, for what it was. I wasn't planning ahead. It was just kind of like I knew coming back, I needed to hit the ground running. Um, you know, it was like a slow start of my career. Not a slow start, but you know, I was a young boy put into put into Bullet Club right away, and I think expectations were so high that you know I wasn't meeting them. But to my to my standard as a young boy, I was. So coming in to this past year 
it wasn't a surprise. I knew in the back of my head, I I knew I had what it took to take. I had what it, what's the saying? Uh, you had what it takes. Yeah, I had what it takes. And so, yeah, it just, it kept, it was a snowball effect. Once I achieved one thing, it kept going, it kept going, it kept getting bigger and you just build off of it. And you have no choice but to get better uh, competing with these high level talents such as Jay White, such as Kenta, such as Naito, and now tagging with a high talent such as ELP. You have no choice, you have to get better or else you're gonna le get left behind. So yeah, it's just been one thing after the other and I gotta enjoy it while it keeps going. Well, ELP, I've got a quick bone to pick with you here. So back back on back on one of my old Twitter accounts before TV Asahi made me public enemy number one for my gifts. Um, I would call your, what you would call a purple nurple, I would call a nipple cripple. Uh, and you politely corrected me on Twitter by calling me an idiot. Uh, yeah. So whilst I've got you here, we've got a, a mutual third party here. So Hikaleo, mm -hmm. ALP's move where he would twist a nipple, a nipple twister, titty twister, purple nurple, nipple cripple. What would you call that move? There's two. In the ring, I call it purple nurple. I think it sounds funny. Yeah. yeah. Purple nurple or purple nurple. I say, I say uh, titty twister. Those are the two I go with. The one you said, I have n I've never heard that before. No one's heard Yeah, nipple, nipple cripple. That's a, that's a British thing, clearly. Uh uh. Not even when I was that there. Sounds like, that sounds like some gang shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, yeah, boy, it's that right there. <laughs> uh, LP, anyone who's seen you wrestle knows how damn good you are. But something I think you're underrated for a bit is your creativity. Uh, you know, we spoke about the press conference shenanigans and all that stuff. Uh, but then you had the rigged boot story that went on for so long and was so fucking good uh, surrounding sudden death. Uh, one of my favorite things was when you were hyping up the debut of your new uh, theme song, your entrance music during the pandemic. Uh, and then you come out on New Japan Strong and it's the licensing issues that you get with Togi Mark playing the light. And there's a bit of confusion and we're all like, oh, what? They're not playing his new music. And then you start to realize, oh, ELP's fucking with us. Like he was never going to play this music off hyping up for so long. Um, you're really great at spinning wrestling tropes and giving something original instead. Have you had other creative ideas that you've just never been able to get over the line for whatever reason? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, uh, hmm. I don't know anything that comes off the top of my head. I'm just, uh, I, I've always been like a theater kid. I was never like an amateur wrestler. Uh, I was always like a, the stuntman actor kind of wrestling. So whenever I come up with these like dumb ideas, and then so what, what I tell him and what I used to tell Ichimori is like, you just got to commit to the bit. Like whatever the bit is, you just have to have to commit to it. I was like, uh, with this, like the sudden death thing, it was when we were like stuck at home in Canada and, you know, like, dude, I love the young bucks. I thought they're so influential and like, you know, they took what they did with the back scratches and brought it up to the next level. And, you know, they had the, the whole like super kick party. So I was like, how can I like, how can I one up the super kick party? So I was like, I'm just going to have like a, a super, super kick. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do that. But then I was like, oh, I'm just going to, I did I like I think tweeted that I was like super kicking trees in the Canadian yeah. wilderness yeah. or something. <laughs> and then, then that like picked up on the news things and I was like, huh. And then I like went to the super J cup for like that, the, like the empty the arena, like yeah. pandemic one. And I was like, Hey, like Rocky had this idea that I'm going to do like a loaded boot gimmick. And I'm going to like pretend that I have ring rust and botch a bunch of things. And then like slowly, like throughout the tournament, get back into it and then just start beating people with super kicks. Uh, and then I was like, yeah, oh, this, like, this could be something. And then I remember we, I went to wrestle kingdom and it was against Hiromu mm -hmm. and we were like, yeah, Gato didn't know what was going on. And I was like, yeah, I have this like story where I'm going to have a loaded boot. And he's like, what? And I was like, Hiromu like, didn't understand. And I was like, yeah, like, I have like a weapon, like brass knuckles in my shoe. And like, they didn't really understand. I was like, oh, fuck. Like, I've already like started this story without asking. And I was like, looked at Rocky. I was like, you really need to help me out here. And then we like finally like convinced him it was like an old 80s Memphis style thing. And, and then uh, he was on board with it. But yeah, it was one of those things where I was like, you just got to commit to the bit and, uh, I think it lasted like multiple promotions and it lasted all the way into the next Wrestle Kingdom where we finally revealed it. And 
Yeah, I don't know if it's more impressive for you if I wrestled with a, a loaded boot the entire time or the first time that I wrestled with it was Wrestle Kingdom. What would be more impressive to you? Uh, well, I remember the Wrestle Kingdom, like, and lots of fans were a bit like, something seems wrong with the LP. Like, has he messed up his foot? Like, he's grabbing his foot after hitting a move or, like, you jumped off the rope and... I was like, no, he's doing a bit, isn't he? Like, he's doing a story that carries on from Strong and stuff like that. But obviously, Strong isn't watched tons by Western fans. So right. I remember there was there was a lot of confusion around it. Um, and then obviously, it came to light what, what the story was. Um, I mean, I'm uh, obviously a, a, a Mark, and I just assumed you wrestled with it every single time. Well, I'm not going to tell you which I did, but either way, it would be impressive if I faked it for a year and pretended that I had a piece of uh tinfoil in my shoe or the first time that i ever tried to wrestle with a piece of tinfoil in my shoe was wrestle kingdom but yeah it just goes back to uh like having to commit to the bit like i kind of like that was my first singles wrestle kingdom moment against hiromu and like instead of just going out there and having a banger i was like i gotta get this story over and i gotta hope that it goes well and then i gotta spend like the entire next year to keep it interesting and like, how do I keep doing it? And people keep trying to reveal it. Like, but to keep that story interesting was really, like, fun and challenging. And I think it kept me sane during the pandemic that I kind of had that year-long story to keep going back to. Because if I didn't, I don't know if I would have lasted in Japan, to be honest. So uh, going back to G.O.D., like, it went from being, like, an offshoot of Bullet Club to an offshoot of Hontai. And it's now pretty much its own faction. In terms of numbers, you're perhaps a bit lacking, especially in the junior heavyweight division. You've only got Jardo in your ranks. Uh, and to be fair, he's big enough, like, muscle-wise to be a heavyweight to do jacked. Uh, are there plans to expand G.O.D.? Like, if you had your choice to bring anybody into the group right now, who would you guys want to bring in? I like Michael Oku. I think Michael Oku or, oh, uh, yeah. or Kevin Knight. Those two, I really Kevin, like. Kevin, yes. I like yeah. that one. Yeah, he's... yeah, those two I've been eyeing a lot, especially... You know, Oka going back to um, Rev Pro days, you know, he's excelled so much. He's doing such big things now. But Kevin Knight, man, he's just amazing. He's so good. And the the he hasn't even reached his potential. Like, seeing him come up with ideas every single day and seeing how his athletic ability as well, he's got swagger, man. That dude, he's cool as hell. That's a, that's a, a thing. He's cool. He's got cool moves. Um, now that Kushida's over at TNA, I don't know. Is that, I don't know how that's working. Is he is he still with us, or is he just completely? So the the, the English translation of a Tokyo Sports was that he has a two way contract or two way uh... deals, which English speaking fans are taking as dual contract. But damn, that's, that's what that... we need again, man. Fucking hell, shit. Yeah. <clears throat> I would me. hope Kevin Knight. You know, now that Dude, I think that's that. that's the best. Like I would love to have Kevin kind of like go with us and kind of like absorb my creativity and, and insaneness and, you know, just committing to the bit and having him have us to bounce ideas off and, and us to uh, hang out with and, and for him to find himself. Yeah, you know, I think did, that'd be really cool. We did a cool. couple tag matches for a couple um, house shows last yeah, year. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Oh, so much fun, man. He's just a great – He he's a kid too. He's in his like mid-20s maybe. He loves rollerblading, which is yeah. different, but you know that's unique. So yeah, yeah we used to nice. we used to puff the uh, old devil's lettuce when I was staying at the uh, LA dojo with them during the pandemic. Yeah, uh, I don't know yeah. how far this is going to go. I don't know. I don't know if we're allowed to uh, invite people into our faction, but you know it's legal. We can talk about smoking weed in California. In Cal in California, <laughs> sure. Um. It's, it's good that you brought Mike Loku, Hickler, because I wanted to speak about, you know, Red Pro is a big part of both your guys' careers. ELP, you was over here for many years from Canada um, before you got into New Japan. And Hickler, you, of course, was on here on Excursion not too long ago. Um, I bought my fair share of shirts from ELP at the merch stand because my fiance, you're one of her favorite wrestlers. Uh, so there's no short All the ladies love ELP. Dude, every fucking, every, single single that we've, every fucking interview. Really? On the last one, there was a girl sleeping, waiting for him to, to log on. And she came on the camera, waved, and then left. It's like every single person. Interview was old lady as loves oh, ELP. To be fair, no, well, I mean, she's not an old lady. But uh, to be fair, like every time I've gone to 
get a like my Wrestle Kingdom program signed or something from ULP, you've also signed an eight by ten just off your own back for my fiance. So thank you for that. It's uh, always appreciated. Yeah, no problem. Um and here I remember when you was over here on excursion, uh your first York Hall show, wanted to go and get a picture of you and say hello. Uh, and I was just laughing to myself because the, the size difference was so <laughs> ridiculous, like how far back the person had to take go to get the picture. So we'd both fit in it. Um but yeah, like you both were such a you, you know both had a long time here in rev pro is there anything you miss about rev pro or just the uk in general i miss everything about it it was surely you weren't staying in portsmouth were you you couldn't miss that surprisingly i do man i, I guess <laughs> it was just i was on my own over there and i was just doing whatever i wanted to do uh i had okarn was there too in portsmouth and mm -hmm. shota came in a little bit he we lived together but it was a lot of fun for me. I think it was like my first time being in a different country by myself and just being like, being able to do, it was kind of like, it was like going away from college, the British you know? slags. Okay, no. uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me see if my girlfriend's leaving. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man. I, uh, I, I loved it. I love Red Poe. It was like, it was like going away to university. You got to, I got to find myself. I teamed up with ELP there a lot. It was just finding yourself and doing a whole lot of new stuff that, I would have never thought to do in Japan because, you know, with the dojo, they're so strict about doing stuff. When I came over to Rev Pro, man, Andy was just like, yeah, whatever you want to do, you know, you do it and then we'll see how it works out. And so, yeah, I love Rev Pro. I hope, I hope with these strong titles and when, uh, if we, when we win those next titles that we can go come back to Rev Pro as tag and, you know, defend it there, do something with Rev Pro more often. Um, it was a great experience for me over there. <laughs> Uh, so you you mentioned Michael Oko already as someone you'd want to have in G.O.D. Is there anyone, I don't know how on the pulse you are with the British wrestling scene at the moment, is there anyone on the British wrestling scene or Rim Rev Pro that you would like to see get a chance in New Japan? Because there's a guy like Luke Jacobs at the moment that seems like he's getting put through the ringer. Like I know ELP, you said on other interviews, you had the match with Desperado and Liger and Rocky Romero and you felt like it was a trial for you. Um, yeah. Luke Jacobs has had two matches versus Tomohiro Ishii now and he faced Yoda Suji at, um, Royal Crest free, like it feels to me like maybe Luke Jacobs is currently getting that trial like you once did. Yeah, it would be hard to argue that. I mean, I, I watched that match that he had with Ishii at the uh, Cobra Box. It was great. I've never wrestled Luke Jacobs. He was, I think he kind of like came up right as I left. And, yeah. uh, you know, Robbie X is a guy that is incredible and could do incredible things in the X Division. Um, you know, Kid Lycos just has his new Unmarked. maskless look. So, you know, he's got lots of potential. He's a good looking kid who can go, you know, whether, you know, he might be better fit in DDT with Chris re redoing CCK. Who knows about that? Uh, I know that like the Agile Blank did some Noah dates in Japan. He's real good. He's from France. Yeah. I mean, I, like, I, I proved that like anybody can get anywhere if you commit to it and you prove that you want it and you know you you show wrestling that you're serious about this uh, a lot of people will take notice i uh, it's funny you mentioned chris brooks because i did want to bring up bucket gaijin and friends uh because at uh, one of their shows it turned out that uelp were the handler for yoshihiko um and you helped him get the win over antonio honda uh and obviously friends with chris brooks but how did that all come about and what was it like for you competing in Bucket Gaijin because it's obviously a very different atmosphere you're literally having a wrestling match in a bar um and have we seen the last of the El, El Fantasmo in Bucket Gaijin well I hope not uh I really wanted to wrestle Yoshiko at Bucket Gaijin that was that's what I asked for uh I don't think the New Japan office liked that idea though unfortunately to have one of their top stars wrestle a blow-up doll in a bar in Shimo Kirizawa. Uh, but they were nice enough that they understand that Chris is my friend and, you know, the Gaijins over there are very small and all interconnected, so they let me go do it unannounced and do some little bit over there. But, uh, yeah, you know, Desperado's got to do DDT, Hiromu's doing everything. Ria Goku, Kojima, and all those guys are doing things. Like, I would love for us to go do some other uh, Japanese promotions. You know, I'd love to do some stuff in DDT. Like, that's why, like, Kikataru is one of my dream matches of all time. Like, like I want to wrestle Kikataru and I want to wrestle Marafuji. Like, 
one of those is probably going to happen more likely than the other. But, you know, a lot of the Japanese guys get to go do other fun things. And, you know, it's something that we want to go do. You know, I'd love to see Hikaleo go, like, like all there's Japan a, or something and, like, go wrestle those big guys. You know, just like... There's that, there's that tag team, Doom or something, Zoom? Uh, I'm not sure. I was going to say the Saito brothers in all Japan. They're two two big guys. That uh, I think two big got, guys, like yeah. Um, they they got what the I can't remember what they they won uh, newcomers in the Tokyo Sports Awards, I think, or something like that. That's what I'm talking. Yeah, one of them is like posing is like that, like long hair. Maybe yeah. They're they're two big big foreigners. Like they've taken all Japan's tag team division entirely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw Goto was talking to them on Twitter, so I was looking them up. Uh, they look like some big boys. Are they from? Do you know where they're from? Uh, not in the world. No, I just know they wrestle for all Japan. Yeah, they look some good big boys over there. There's also someone from in, in Noah. Uh, I met him out in Edinburgh. He's uh, fuck, he's jacked. He's got a nice six pack. Um, oh, what is he actually Scottish? Yeah, yeah, Jack Morris. Jack Morris. Yeah, I see. He's doing big things over there as well. Yeah, he's um, a double champion. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, I, man. Jesus. I wanna see him. He's come hey, a long you, way. You guys could be double champions in a, very soon as well. So let's wait and Two see. weeks. It's a possibility. Uh, Hikolo, you're very much, like I said, part of this new generation of New Japan. Uh, people might not realize it because there is such a focus on the Yuya and Yoyasuji, etc. But you came up with them guys. You were in that block in the G1 Climax with them and you beat them all. You beat Suji, you beat Renrita, you beat Shoto Umino. You added Kaito Kiyomiya in there just for good measure. Um, from a fan perspective, it's clear that there is this next generation of guys coming up and that includes you. Did, can you feel that generational shift yourself as well within New Japan? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. It's you feel it when you're in the ring. You feel it when you're in backstage. Um, you know, with Fale not being there that often, with Lance not being there that often, there's like a need for like this new monster to come in. And I think this year was um, kind of like that that ground. You know, planting that seed that there was this new generation. Here's the next big guy, and you know, tem teaming up with ELP, I think, helped me a lot. Like there was this thing where i was um i was so focused on being the next big guy just being like like one one face you know just like there's no other moving parts to me but as soon as we teamed up with elp it's like the whole other side was he brought out this whole other side of me and i think that's good because it was just one directional for me at the time and so yeah beating those guys it was a good blueprint you know the blueprint it's laid out you know that's the i'm always going to be in their way for the future yes um so i think that was a great groundwork um on my part to establish myself as the next big man in the company so yeah next year it should be interesting i think one of my favorite matches from this g1 was suji in yes general. that was my uh, that was my favorite of your g1 uh, matches was a suji one that one just hit differently it does like we're i guess because we were roommates in the dojo we okay. Had to go through it the entire. Um, he came in like in April when I came in in January before him, but we were roommates right away. He spoke English. He has football background, so we were just able to connect on so many levels. And during training, it was me and him because he was surprisingly the next biggest guy in our class besides Oka, who had to leave already. And so even in tag league, when it was us and Fuji and um, his partner, that was the most like even just. Being in there with him, that's the most comfortable I felt. Everything just clicked, um, even with Shota and Narita as well. So I think the matches will only get better because we gelled so much in the dojo that it's going to – it'll show too. I think it's shown with Suji. So, yeah, we'll just build on that next year. Uh, ALP, just so we can take care about our match, one of the matches I've always wanted to ask you about and just get your thoughts about is uh, your first best of the Super Juniors, your first tour – your first defeat comes at the hands of Rocky Romero in Corrigan Hall. Uh, the crowd are losing their minds. There's like a minute left on the clock uh, and you finally take your first loss in New Japan. Uh, obviously, it sucks for you at the time, but now looking back on that, I think it was 2019, I want to say. Uh, yeah. How do you how'd you feel now looking back at that match? Because that's one of my favorite New Japan matches. It, it, it's just, seem, it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think me and Rocky knew that's what was going to happen. You know, we I don't think we would have ever uh, guessed that we would have had those reactions or, you know, that like that was like my fr first Corkin match 
ever was a main event against Will Ospreay, which I was shitting my pants for. And I was like, not, not many people like have main event Corkins as their like debut. And I was like, oh shit, like and I thought that went pretty good. And then you know, I was doing the new uh, new bad guy character that like I did that whole UK run as a babyface. Yeah, and I like and like it was a week before my new Japan debut that I was still doing a baby face and I flew to Japan and all of a sudden had to like completely change everything that had got me to the song and dance. Uh, and it was funny because like that first tag match that I had against Dragon Lee and Will, I don't know if you remember, but I like tea bagged Will with the yeah, ice packs. Pack. Yep. <laughs> and, like, but like that, like that was something that I didn't plan. Like that just happened naturally. And like, I was like, Oh, okay. I think we'll be fine here. I, I got this, but yeah, I mean, for, for whatever reason, that Corican match was so hot. And uh, I think that the English commentary added a lot to that, too. Like, if you watch that back, like Juice and Kevin and Chris were all losing their minds, wanting to see the old veteran beat this new little cocky newcomer. And uh, a funny thing about that match was, like, we weren't used to the time calls. So like they were saying the times, but Red Shoes doesn't tell you like how much time you have left. Like he just does his thing. So I know like we're hearing things, and I know we have like a couple things left, and we don't know how much time's left. And everyone starts screaming and yelling, and we started panicking. Uh, yeah, and luckily that we got we got the tap out before the the thirty came. But to go off that, me and Rocky had a rematch at Corican like a year or two later that actually did a time limit draw that wasn't supposed to happen oh like we weren't supposed to do the time limit draw it was supposed to be something with uh taguchi coming out and sudden death and that was built around the mega coaches and the sudden death spot yeah. but like we were going along so we had to skip the spot that brought taguchi out so then he didn't come out and then we were like calling everything on the fly and then the time's coming down and you can't tell if it's english and japanese because you're not focus on on the time calls and then like gave him a sudden death but like i didn't get a good super kick on him so then he like kicked out and we're like oh fuck and then they ran like the the time limit draw we're like oh shit that was not supposed to happen but i'm glad that not many people remember that one and they all remember the uh, super junior one yeah, I must say, I, I completely forgotten about the draw. Um, Hikaleo, one match I wanted to get your thoughts on as well is, uh, speaking of G1 Climax, you made it to the quarterfinals and you go up against Tetsuya Naito, uh, which, you know, is a big match in and of itself, a singles match against Naito. ELP had it at the New Japan Cup at the start of the year. Um, the match ends with one of my, like, one of the best Destinos I think I've seen Naito hit. It was so fucking cool. Um, what was that moment, that event like for you? Because you know you're going in there with probably the most popular man in new japan pro wrestling today yeah i felt like i was back in bullet club because when i walked out it was so deafening with naito chance i've never been in the ring with naito before and so just walking out usually i can hear my name being chanted here and there but i didn't hear my name once at all during that match it felt like an away game or just it felt like i was in bullet club again with all the cheers for naito but yeah man he just he moves differently man he's he thinks differently. And yeah, those, fuck. I remember I was so damn tired in that match because I kept <laughs> picking his ass up. Like every move he was doing, I was countering it with catching him somehow. He, he was trying to do his uh, tornado DDT off the mm -hmm. rope and I caught it for um, a powerbomb there. And I was like, God damn, you're heavy, bro. And we're like, <laughs> it's near the end of the match. And so we're just both gassed. And I remember when he went up, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I caught him for that. And in the back of my head, I'm like, I don't know how to keep doing this. And then it was Destino. I got to tell you, that's one of the worst moves to take because it's fucking just him just all on you. Like, first of all, he comes here and it's like, I don't know how he gets momentum go up. And to do that, what I think we did it like three times, two or three times in a row. Because I caught him for a choke slam on one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that choke slam was insane. The oh. fucking height and everything on it. it was, oh. That was everything. I, that's That was like everything I had in the tank right there just to like push him around. But it was, I loved it so much because it was a whole different match than anything I've been doing all uh, G1. It was different and it was just different ways of 
you know, he's an LIJ member, you know, it's like that CMLL type of Lucha style. So I liked it a lot. It was just different ways of uh, countering, different ways of combinations, and just different ways of countering that Destino was just uh, mind blowing in my in my sense. So yeah, it was. I, that's also that whole G one was amazing, but that one also stands out as well. A few more questions before I let you guys go. Um, ELP, uh, we know you do your own music. Uh, you done like graphics for the New Japan Collection app and stuff like that. Um, and also, I know you do the graphics for New Japan Strong as well, which not many people know. Uh, could you talk about doing the graphics for New Japan Strong? How did that come about? Like, how did that end up on your plate, considering you must be busy enough with all the traveling and being a wrestler in and of itself? Mm, I don't know how that, how it came about, but um, I always used to do graphics, and uh, I used to work for EA Sports as an editor on Need for Speed. Oh. Uh, like, I, I went to film school. Like, I had, like, a real job before I started wrestling, which kind of, like, prevented me from pursuing wrestling for so long uh like i like i switched and i did cartoons for netflix and worked on king julian which won a daytime emmy and we like created dino truck so i've always done like creative um avenues before wrestling which is why i like doing all my own t-shirts and stuff it keeps my brain active but i just remember looking at some of the new japan strong graphics and i'm like these are embarrassing for like a professional company in 2022 or whatever it was and even still like, i think some of the japanese ones are so bad that it's like i don't i don't know what they're thinking but it's like if you want to be perceived as like one of the top companies in the world you have to like have this presentation that uh you know i really like doing it for new japan strong um like, I like doing the cool Western-style posters. I like doing the cool, like, retro wave posters. I like, you know, it just gives me something to be creative with every month that I uh, get to have that outlet with. But it is a little frustrating when I'll spend so much time making, like, the nameplates and the graphics and animated versus screens. And then you, like, watch the stream and the stream doesn't work or, like, the cameras aren't white balanced or, you know, like, the, the ring isn't centered to the stage, which isn't centered to hard cam. And it's, like, they get, it's very frustrating that we can't get it together because it's, like, a Japanese company operating in America, you know? Like, they have some American help, but it like it could be a lot better and i really hope in 2024 we've had some discussions but i really hope they go to more premium live events rather than more consistent shows you know like like the new japan usa shows have great cards great matches they always deliver uh but i i really want them to focus on selling these shows out and having the good presentation and having the good pay-per-views that start on time and having them you know worth the fans money because there is that audience that wants to see authentic new japan in america and it's something that i bring up all the time it's something rocky brings up uh and there has been discussions to do bigger shows in the states which i think would benefit uh new japan a lot and uh yeah i think i do want to help the japanese side with the graphics i think there's a lot of room for improvement on that side but it is a it is a weird balance of being like an on air roster talent, and then also having that backstage role of the creative, like kind of two separate people. So, I'm happy to do the the tickets and posters when they ask, but sometimes I do wish they would ask more, because I I want them to do a better job. You know, I think the Japanese fans want better graphics too. Like you look at Noah and DDT, like everybody does awesome shit oh, except for incredible. new Japan. And it's like, come on, man. Like the wrestle kingdom stuff looks good, but it's going to drop after that. And you're like, why can't every show look like this wrestle kingdom presentation? But it's that Japanese mindset of mentality of adapting that I find difficult to get them to, understand you know yeah so a, a couple more questions first one uh so contracts have been a big discussion point whilst you guys have been doing the rounds during these interviews uh el phantasmo you revealing that you were offered an aw contract at the same time as new japan you went with new japan hikaleo uh over on true hill heat with my buddy sp3 you were talking about your uh, wwe coming to you with a deal when it kind of just fizzling out um 
what is the situation with you guys within New Japan at the moment? Because Hikula, if WWE were on your doorstep, like, you know, was you was your contract expiring? Have you signed a new contract? And El Fantasma, you said, you know, you, you were initially only meant to do three months. Was the initial deal with New Japan back in 2019? And yet here you are still today. Yeah, I think it just goes by how we perform, really. You know, after this Wrestle Kingdom, if you win or not, it that's kind of that kind of leads to how we decide what's going to happen for our future. If we stay together or if we separate or if we leave to other, you know, better choices out there, better uh, opportunities to see what happens, um, as far as I can say for myself. Yeah, I mean, I know... I know the fans want the rocket on my back to be lit and I know I know I've had the rocket on my back a few times and I've failed to light it myself. Uh this like this past year I lost to Naito, I lost to Tama, I lost to Finley. I had that great match against Osprey, I lost again. The, the going to the finals, putting on these great performances but I keep losing. Uh and then we have this big one at Wrestle Kingdom again, where I've never been able to win at Wrestle Kingdom. If I can't win at Wrestle Kingdom, then I think I need to take a step back and reassess my position in New Japan, whether I belong in New Japan, or maybe it's time to look elsewhere and see if I need to reinvent myself and start from scratch elsewhere, or if I can get it done and take that top Gaijin spot. That I mean, that's why we're here. Uh, but I think a lot of it rests on what happens at Wrestle Kingdom because I think all you guys know that January 31st is contract season. And I know Osprey's already signed with AEW. I know you guys know Okada's and talks with people. Uh, I don't publicly talk about it a lot, but my deal's up January 31st. And I'm going to wait until after Wrestle Kingdom to start really thinking about what's best for my future, you know. Uh, I mean, I'd be sad to see you go, but it's always one of those things. I can be happy for the human being and sad to lose the wrestler, which is very much the case in Osprey. You know, I'm glad he's leaving New Japan, but this is what he wants to do. I'm happy for Will Osprey, the human being. Um, but to bring it all back to Wrestle Kingdom, then uh, we are, uh, it's, it's days away, weeks away. Um, one final question for you both. Can you give us a tease of what to expect at Wrestle Kingdom? You know, is there a special entrance plan? Is there special gear? uh you know a special move something like you know hikilaro went up for the thunder kiss much to everyone's shock at world tag league uh what can we expect at wrestle kingdom there ain't gonna be no tables i take <laughs> people out twice now and i've been put to the table twice so no tables for us ladders this time baby you gotta jump oh, off that man. ladder you won't you ain't gonna slip <laughs> off a ladder you'll slip off the top rope but you ain't gonna slip off a ladder uh, i don't think people know that either like when i jumped off that top rope the new japan ropes aren't um there's a cover over the rope itself, so it spins. They spin. So, like, when I jumped off, it my foot it spun spins. the rope, and it just... I was getting ready to do a nice little uh, thunder kiss on that boy, but, you know, it was, how it was the, a rope fault. How the fuck are you doing any of the stuff you do, ELP? <laughs> if the well, that's... Spinning. I mean, that that's, goes back under of why I'm so underrated, that uh, I can pull this shit off effortlessly, and people don't even realize that the ropes are... They're just... They're like a hose that spins on a metal wire like you actually try and walk on it it'll start spinning and like you slip on it a lot which is uh you know i haven't i don't i haven't slipped on it oh i slipped on i did i slipped a rope walk once at the g1 against juice uh i had to, like i had my head smashed a couple of times then i tried to do the rope walk and i fell into the ring but then i ran and did like a springboard front flip and covered it pretty well but that's the only time that I have slipped in New Japan, but I'm super helpful. I got this big guy to hold his hand because it, it helps a lot. But you know, it also it looks cooler. You know, it the, the requires a lot less skill, but it also looks cool to have him help push me off and stuff. But yeah, we for sure got new Wrestle Kingdom gear. Uh, you just I actually me, got you sent me the video for our uh, walkway entrance. He yeah he the, the staging too. yeah the end of stage. Woo. Yeah, so I got to work with the uh, the actual staging people who did the Wrestle Kingdom stage and, you know, all the different screens and stuff. And I worked with them of where I wanted the logos and where I wanted the the blue and white and all that stuff. So the preview looks awesome. I think it's going to look real cool inside. You know, I'm excited just to have, like, that big-ass entrance inside the Tokyo Dome. Like, that's, that's what I dream about all the time, like, those big epic entrances and... You know, we got the new costumes come in. Uh, 
it's going to be awesome. Well, yeah, Wrestle Kingdom 18 live on njpwworld.com, January 4th. Uh, ELP Hikuleo, thank you for joining me. You've got their Twitter handles down in the bottom, ELP Wrestling and at Hikuleo. Uh, also check out Hikuleo's Patreon, patreon.com slash Hikusup, Hikus Hub, H-U-B. Uh, lots of backstage content and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for joining me and good luck at Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, I hope you get the win if it means you guys are sticking around in New Japan longer. Yeah, well, thanks for having us on and thanks for always uh, helping plug our stuff and, you know, we feel so bad that you guys do all the work with the gifts and, you know, have the TV Asahi come at you. And it makes no sense. Nobody backstage wants it. You know, even like the gifts at the actual New Japan World post, they don't make sense. And, you know, they're posting random stuff with random names, like like the fans post the best gifts. And we appreciate the headlines and the gifts. And we wish there was something that we could do to allow them, you know, fucking... Taka and Sonata always talk about, like, they're going to change New Japan and change everything. Well, fucking get gifts allowed on the internet, boys. <laughs> like, fuck you. You want to change something, do something productive. and Yeah. Uh, get it on, get it I'll, on Twitter. I'll, I'll buy Just Five Guys merch if that happens. But no, thank you again, guys. Thank you.